And in the budget for next year, the VA is asking for $383 million for PTSD treatment. But for many vets, finding the right treatment option is frustrating. Lori Jane Glee is here, and one of those treatment options in the future could be marijuana. Yeah, John, Colorado has invested millions of dollars to investigate how well pot might work to treat this illness. But the study is off to a slow start, and some veterans say they're not willing to wait for the results, which still could be years away. I started out getting so stressed out and having such bad anxiety that I would start to vomit blood. Navy veteran Zach Phillips wasn't certain he'd make it to age 33. I was a totally different person that didn't care if they lived or died. A deployment overseas in 2006 left him suffering from a tortured mind and a painfully damaged wow. back. I had popped my head out of that room and then I'd seen the smoke. Zach says he fell down a ladder during a fire on board the USS Nashville in the Gulf of Aden. And when he returned to American soil, his mind turned against him. I was drinking a whole handle bottle of rum or vodka every night just to sedate me and put me to sleep. What was happening to Zach, according to his doctors, was post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. It affects one in five veterans who served after 9-11. It was so bad for a while that I became homeless. And my, my son was placed with my former family members to uh, live with because I was not in my right health or in my right mind. Zach, like many veterans, says he consumed several cocktails of prescription drugs over the years. There's uh, Xanaflex, that's a muscle relaxer, Ultran, that's a pain medication, Celebrex. Nothing prescribed by his doctors seemed to provide long-term relief. He now medicates primarily with marijuana. It's inspired me, it's made me feel capable of being more of an intelligent person. The push to learn more about the efficacy of medical marijuana has been so compelling, the state of Colorado invested $9 million into nine different ongoing studies. This was a very unique, um, I think, once in a lifetime opportunity. Larry Wolk leads Colorado's Department of Public Health. He says funding came from a financial surplus left over from the early 2000s when the state charged excessive fees for medical marijuana cards. More than a third of that money is now paying for PTSD-specific research. We've certainly heard from a large number of veterans that they believe that marijuana is helpful for their PTSD. Uh, but we've also heard from a number of veterans and treatment providers that it may be harmful. Um, this is the medical exam room. Dr. So Sue Sisley is leading one of the PTSD studies in Arizona. And all, you know, we check their vital signs. We She's focused on veterans who smoke marijuana to cope with chronic service-related PTSD. I certainly believe all these veterans when they tell me that their subjective experiences that cannabis helped them. But until we put it through the rigors of a controlled trial, I will never be able to fully embrace the idea that cannabis is a legitimate medication. Sisley has been treating veterans for nearly two decades. The skin irritation is not resolved yet. Resolved. In the past, she'd prescribed traditional pharmaceuticals while dismissing her patients' claims that cannabis could help. I was highly judgmental because I didn't believe that cannabis was a medicine. I'd never been trained to believe that cannabis was anything except a deeply dangerous, highly addictive drug. It wasn't until one of her patients passed away from a heroin overdose that she started to wonder whether she should have taken cannabis more seriously. He was in great shape when he was using the cannabis and then um, I had actively discouraged him. He was already getting a massive amount of opioids from the VA. Then he graduated to heroin and then um, his mom called me when he, she found him the next morning with a needle in his arm and he was dead. And I, you know, couldn't um, help but feel completely responsible for that. 
Cicely keeps her patient's service hat on her desk as a reminder of her mission to learn more about marijuana. But her effort hasn't been without challenges. Here in Arizona, Dr. Cicely's study has run into some significant snags. She's had some trouble recruiting 76 qualified veteran participants who are able to come to this Phoenix area lab on a weekly basis. We'll probably need to screen another five or 6,000 veterans, but the biggest blockade right now to recruitment is the fact that the Phoenix VA hospital will not allow us access. The Phoenix VA healthcare system serves about 91,000 veterans. No one would grant an on-camera interview. But a spokesperson told us, because possessing, distributing, and dispensing marijuana is still a federal offense, the VA will not facilitate Sisley's access to veterans on site. I worry that we won't be able to complete this study because that is the absolute highest density of treatment resistant PTSD patients is in that hospital. And Cicely has another concern. We have a lot of extraneous plant material in there. You she says the quality of the government provided cannabis isn't ideal. It doesn't necessarily represent the cannabis in the real world. Um, real world cannabis can be 20 to 30 percent THC. Ours is about, you know, 10 to 11 percent THC. I get the cannabis oil and then put it on the vitamin. Zach fought to have PTSD added to a list of qualifying conditions for medical marijuana in Colorado. And though the state recently approved it, the VA will not pay for veterans to have it. And there are many doctors who are wary of recommending it. I think there's going to have to be a whole lot more research done before I as a provider would feel comfortable with that. Dr. Dana Monroe specializes in trauma-focused psychotherapy called eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, or EMDR. According to the VA's National Center for PTSD, it is one of the most effective treatments. Monroe says similar evidence supporting marijuana just isn't there. There are long-term studies with marijuana use that can increase paranoia, which is unfortunately one of the things with PTSD with having trust issues. You don't want to encourage that. So I would still be of the mindset that, you know, you may think it's helping you short term, but you also have to look at the long term perspective. Zach says he has never tried EMDR. I'm not closed minded to other means of therapy that's suggested and uh, I'm still willing to try others. For now, he's happy to be feeling more like himself and optimistic that research about treatment for his current condition is underway. He knows the healing process for himself and many veterans like him may never be complete. The American Legion recently sent a letter to the Secretary of Veterans Affairs on Dr. Sisley's behalf. The organization is asking for help accessing patients at the Phoenix VA so the study can be completed.